Hey, everybody, I'm Jody Vance. And I'm George Affleck. And it's time for... Well, it's Christmas Eve in the drunk tank. Unspun. A little nod, yeah. A little nod to Shane McGowan, Pogues. He died last night. Um, you know, it's probably one of the best Christmas songs out there. I know it's Amanda's favorite. Is it? Yeah, now they're both dead. So, sad. It Christy is sad. Nicole died in, what, she's trying to save her kid from a, a boat that was going to run him over and it ran over her instead. Awful. Terrible. Awful. Uh, Anyways, Merry Christmas, everybody. It's almost <laughs> December. You start playing your Christmas music, I guess. Oh, or go on a Christmas train if you can get a ticket. Oh, yeah. Speaking. Good segue to park board there, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, my God. What a week. What another crazy week at the park board. Where do we start here? Do we want to start with the fiasco about the bike lane or do you want to just start with the Christmas train? Because my beef with the Christmas train, they release more yeah. tickets because they've expanded it. I love this for the burn fund, by the way. I love mm. the idea of there being more tickets. I think it should run longer. I think, you know, as long as it's dark, I think kids are going to love to go somewhere in the evening and see sparkly lights. I mean, this mm -hmm. is not difficult. It shouldn't be as t a tight window. Um, but can't we just have some tickets at the kiosk for the families who are just going there? Can't we have some holds for people that are just going to show up? Everything goes like 12,000, 24,000 tickets are sold in 90 minutes. Okay. It's a Christmas train, people. Like, can <laughs> we just scalp have them? And then people right? Can we just them. have tickets at venue? I'd like to see some tickets at venue for every event. And I think because then it would, if it rains, people don't show up and those people then can, who want to go in the rain can go in the rain. I 100% have been on that so, train in the rain a oh, bazillion yeah. times with my grandmother. It's we dress for rain. We dress for <laughs> rain. We do. Exactly. Um, okay. So the Christmas train, and then I'm, I'm, I give props to the park board for getting the train up and running because we were told it wasn't going to run. It was for actually years. the city of Vancouver who did it, by the way, engineering staff. Uh, where did that money go, by the way? Uh, is that into revenue for, it, it couldn't have gone directly. Well, like, where did it go? The money that, uh, that the mayor said he raised. I'd like to see where that cash actually went because there's not a place where you donate money to see like there should be some transparency on that number. I'd like to see where that money actually went because mm. it actually the work was done by city engineering staff, not park board. Right. FYI. Interesting. Interesting mm -hmm. because literally this morning on one of the morning news shows, I, the, the copy read congratulations to the park board for getting this up and running. So it was city engineering, yep. but don't, isn't see that there's the part where, that the Vancouver charter really fails one of many that it keeps it separate right like it's like this it's kind of like a, a a city councilor with no impact on what happens in a park promising the return oh, of a yes. bike lane yes what was it my class and city councilor getting a lot of heat this week for saying about removing the bike lanes that the temporary bike lanes or whatever those hell those things were that they were pushed in there without any consultation uh, and replace them with a properly constructed bike lane. And we talked about this last week again. With two lanes of traffic. Staff yeah. having the ability to probably do this better than park board staff. No offense to park board staff, but you have a lot of professional road builders at the city of Vancouver and right. bike lane builders. They've built a lot of them now. Right. Uh, hundreds of them. Hundreds of kilometers of them. Um, so many. Yeah. So cycling. the Mike Klassen said, I, I over, I, look, I guess I over promised uh, <laughs> something. I mean, I props might to have. Mike for being... Yeah honest yeah. i mean he's getting a lot of heat but you know but then people are saying well how dare you over promise and of course and then if i see justin mcelroy and all these people saying yeah that's the difference between running for office and being elected uh is oh my god my phone's ringing hold on go Stop. ahead I, that's I okay go ahead anymore. That phone's ringing. i'm gonna give you props for okay. saying i think in episode one of yeah. the podcast you said that running for mayor and being mayor running yep. for office and and being in office are two very different things and once you get into yes. particularly Vancouver City Hall you realize how little you can actually do based on what you're saying you will do and i really i got to tell you i have always liked mike classen as a person so that's full disclosure he has been 
a, a colleague of mine. He was a columnist, a longtime columnist. I, I worked in conjunction with him when he was with BC Care Providers. Um, I, I've done some events where I was the moderator and he was part of the organization behind it when, with BC Care Providers. And he's just a very upstanding guy. Like I've never, in my personal experience with Mike, this is very on brand for who he is when <laughs> yes. he, but it, isn't it though? Like, let's take I the mean, politics aside. I don't, like it is. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I don't necessarily agree with all of Mike Klassen's politics, no. and nor, nor should I necessarily have to in order to respect <laughs> and like his, I like the fact that he's like, you know what? I overpromised. I got this wrong. I can't do it. I thought I could. And that's yeah. got the people going, well, you promised us a bike lane by this spring. Well, okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's not it, it harkens back to your earlier comment about, you know, the park board and Vancouver charter. And, you know, why was yeah. Mike Klassen even promising he's running for council, not commissioner of right. the park board. So he shouldn't have waded into that territory anyways. Which is his, his probably butt. his lesson, probably his yes, lesson in all of this, right? Although it begs the question, as you said, oh, thumbs up there. Uh, if you're watching this, I don't know why that was. That was you again. Um, oh, I turned those things <laughs> off. Do I have to turn them off every time I'm doing I, this? I don't, Sorry, I'm going to keep my hands. It seems to have them. But, you know, that, uh, you know, and, and I, I think I was on several media outlets this week because nobody else wants to talk about this. I was talking about Park Board. Ironically, former city councilor talking a lot about Park Board this week uh, with uh, Global and CTV. And, and, and obviously the question kept coming up about, you know, should we even have a park board, which always comes up when there's controversy. There's two things that happened this week. One was the bike lane, as you mentioned. The other was they approved the revenue audit, which was we talked about in a couple of last, the right. last couple of episodes uh, yeah. where, you know, this they basically aren't making proper amount of money. My concern is that they're just going to, and it looks like they're just going to start basically taxing users. They've even talked about having a fee to get into the park, Stanley Park specifically. When they should be looking at other revenue opportunities, like I've mentioned, like uh, more cactus clubs, not specifically cactus clubs, but let's let, let the private sector run some of these things and get a get a chunk of the cash Spanish that they banks. can make. Hello, Spanish hello. banks. Your Spanish idea banks, for Spanish South banks Vancouver. is a no brainer. Parking lot. and then it's you a fill up those lot on park, a beach. You fill up those parking lots that people already have to pay for, yeah. right? Because that's the thing. Yeah. And and you and and people come from all over to spread out on what is a mile deep at low tide, of space and place and views, views. and things. It's just and Pacific Spirit Park all up that hill. Places to go and walk safely and and be six meters apart or whatever the hell we're doing now. I don't know. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just throw that in there. But people, you know, if somebody's like, I'm scared of everything. The the COVID yeah. is airborne. People. Mm -hmm. We'll feel comfortable there. And, and, you know, everybody gets to mix together and safely run around and do their thing and get a meal. And, oh, gosh, George. Oh, a bottle of wine? A glass of wine. <gasps> yeah, you, get, you get out of here. You kids, get off my lawn. Can you imagine? It's all the people down along that stretch of road that are like, nope. Right? Even no though. Fancy, the no fun city could, locations. They could just go across the street and sit on a patio and enjoy yes. it i mean i'd love to see mom and pop organizations there i'd like to actually artists, see artists i'd like to see that the, that the big box excuse me for one second that the big box places like the cactus club that you mentioned as an example i'd like them to not have dibs in it and actually make it so small that you have to have a single unit and it is only there to help bring up the ones that are getting bulldozed by the big big brands yeah, right and I mean, and i'm not saying that i don't yeah. love i love me and earls Grand Ball Ball. has that rule has that rule yeah well kind of um, tap and barrel i mean come on oh yeah they, but if that you, was an existing license but if you got enough money you can buy your way into anywhere these days it seems mm. um, you couldn't get on there they tried. right right anyways but i think that there's lots of opportunity for revenue making would, for the park board and they they aren't pursuing them and as far as i can tell they're running out of time they asked for more reports and that was related to the bike lane as well you know, I don't, we, it, it just let the engineers put the design together and yeah. then just get approval. What, what do we need? We know that people are divided on this issue. You just got to put a plan together and then approve it or not approve it. And there's only people that and move only on. competent people who can design bike lanes, get those people and get them designing. There's one more thing about Stanley Park. Did you, uh, 150,000 trees need to be taken out because of the looper yeah. moth problem there. Oh, so there's going to be, yeah. There's going to be, and obviously the prior park board failed miserably in caring for the parks. Like, let's just be real. Let um, everything go wild. 
everything. Oh, let's just not mow lawns or moths. weed or anything. And but the looper moths, um, I've been reading up on it because it's absolutely heart crushing for those of us who love a tree. Um, the 150,000 trees need to be removed from Stanley Park. Um, because they're already damaged. They're a fire threat. The looper moths kill these right. trees and we do not need a, a horrifying fire in our downtown core in our beautiful park and wipe it out. So they're going to go in, but they have to strategically cut out that many trees, which means there's going to be traffic chaos to and from the North shore through Stanley park, because they have to figure out a way to get all of the equipment in and out at while well, people still access the park. So while mm -hmm. they're trying to figure out a way to charge people more, at the park to make money. <laughs> sorry, they're also gonna, sorry, it. sorry, but we're going to be busy yeah. sawing down the tree, but another, I'm sorry about the reactions on the screen. I've tried to it's fix just, it. It's an, it's in an update. Can you do the heart? Heart. Oh, there you did it. I'm getting good <laughs> at it. Watch. Oh, the celebration didn't happen. Oh, oh whatever. No, no, no balloons. Damn it. It only happens when you don't want it to happen, especially the balloons one. Like, oh, oh my god i think the balloons came in a time where i was talking about really serious stuff uh, yeah. let's okay so <laughs> let's talk about the budget a little bit because mm -hmm. when this new administration came in when when abc party took over budget wise you were like please back in time don't yeah but you were like please don't table a budget until it's time yeah. to table a budget and then you got to the point where you're like okay guys gonna need a budget gonna need it and then last week you're like this 600 pages of budget i'm just kind of whipping through it What's the debrief? What are you seeing? Anything glaring? Well, I mean, I was disappointed last year when they came back with a budget that was basically give everything to everybody. I was of the opinion that if you were going to be doing some painful things to stuff that was built up over years that were mostly politically motivated. Right. The leaky roof bit. Right. This is the part you could have. That was your chance to really slash and burn. They didn't. They just gave gifts to everybody, kept everything kind of much the same. Uh, this year, you know, it's it's another it was just massive increase last year, 10%. This is just 7.5%, 8%. Maybe they'll get it down a percent. But what's really annoying to me is that this budget review committee that they've struck, a bunch of CGAs are going to be four months. They were supposed to present in October, pre-budget, um, right. so that the council could then make some tough decisions or whatever. Uh, they're not ready. They won't be ready till February, which will, isn't past budget time, but unusual so you can go to late March, april but yeah. you know if you're getting a review of what you should hack it's almost too late by that point so um now we're going into year two of your the second budget so now we're into 2025 budget election 20 there's i mean what is what abc is really putting themselves on a corner here if they're going to keep going with these seven to ten percent budget increases um because they haven't come up with a solution to reduce them and you can blame rate you know inflation but inflation is down to four percent three and a half percent now so you shouldn't be seeing a budget more than four percent for 2024 in my mind um and i just haven't seen them do anything harsh that uh, i think should have been done um and yes oh yes it's so much easier to be an armchair politician but I, you know i was in council and there's lots of there's there's areas for improvement there most yeah. of their cost is staffing and so that's the challenge you've got unions you've got you know it, it can be expensive to remove people um but you know, when Penny Ballum uh, was hired and, and and the market crashed in 2008, and she was the, brought in, she was a city manager, the new city manager with Vision Vancouver yeah. in 2008. She froze everything for about two years. Uh, no hiring allowed at all. Got to find people internally. You can't, you know, you don't have to lay people She's off. She's so you can't smart. Hire people. So we need more people stayed, like her. I mean, she overstayed her welcome, but uh, yeah, but we, uh, but you know, change agent is what you need. And I don't see a change agent in place. That's what I was going to say. Change agent. You need somebody. And, and you know what? Ken Sim kind of sold himself as that yep. coming in. I'm the accountant I'm going to do. And I, you know what? There's a lot of, of stuff that I think that this mayor has done differently from the previous that I appreciate. Uh, there are other things that I'm like, mm, okay. Cause like in Surrey, there's rumblings like with all of what's happening in Surrey right now with the SPS and housing issues and school issues. It's not just policing. There's a lot in this mm. fastest growing municipality in the country that cannot keep up. And, and I, you know, hearing that, that mayor Brenda Locke was in Victoria at the legislature meeting with Ravi uh, Callan mm -hmm. about housing, you know, good. Let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's Another have topic. other conversations perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Let's, yeah. let's help people. Um, but mm -hmm. 
somewhere in all the discussions of how much this is all going to cost Surrey taxpayers yet again, you know, the tweets go out about, oh, God, the policing is going to be this much. And oh, my God, school is going to be this much. And oh, my God, housing is going to be this much. D- the, people are also talking about how there's like a budget for em- an emergency, like a surplus budget account. You talk about the different buckets in city halls. Mm-hmm. People are talking about there being like a billion dollars in in Surrey City Hall that nobody's talking about nor touching. Mm-hmm. And and if well, a twenty percent increase was coming for citizens, they would tap into that budget. They would, because people can't manage that. Depends how it's how I don't know enough about the Surrey budget, but it depends how it's how where the money is. Is it capital or is it operating? You can't take right. uh, money from a capital if, fund into an operating. But yeah, I mean, although you know, I mean, what is contingency billion, funds exist? Yeah, is my point, and there has to be one common. in Vancouver. Yes, there is. There yeah, has and, to. It went down a lot over the last few years, for sure, but it's there. It's not like Burnaby's, which was at $4 billion, uh with Derek Corrigan. Uh, he was just squirreling it away because uh, yeah. he didn't want to get into the housing game, whereas Vancouver took their funds and used it for housing. Right. Uh, Derek Corrigan, who lost because of that issue, uh, ironically, because he ended up saving, you know, saved Burnaby from massive tax increases because of... And look the at the density in Burnaby. Cash. And look how, how clean it, it is. And look at the parks. And should we go on? Yeah. Um, you know, prioritizing. They're, they're now focused on housing a lot. It's their number one issue is they're following Vancouver's path. So their budgets won't be as uh, as as easy in the future because they're using up all their funds. Um, but uh, to have that ready, it looks like Alberta, right? Their Heritage Fund, uh, which was spent. Uh, but that was the point of the Heritage Fund at the time um, was a rainy day fund, right? And so right. I think it was Lougheed, the Premier Lougheed put that in place in the 70s. But at some point, it had billions and billions and billions of dollars. It's like Norway has one, and it has it. Has, Norway's is like, it's ridiculous. I think it's hundreds of billions of dollars they've got yeah. in their in their fund. Um, but you, you, rainy days do come, and this is what I when I was in council, I was always warning Vancouver. I said, you guys, we got to save more money. It's not always going to be prosperous like this. We need to set yeah. aside not six hundred million or eight hundred million. You know, four to six billion should be set aside yeah. to deal with not only operating, but when you we want to build stuff to employ people to keep the city vibrant to keep our thing you know those kinds of things when the economy is down makes it feel it gives people confidence that the economy yeah. is not as badly because the private sector is struggling so government should insert itself at that point to give yeah. a sense of confidence. prosperity and confidence yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't have the funds for that here right in vancouver no. um we don't um, it, it's interesting just looking around at municipalities and people often um, give us feedback on this podcast Hi, by the way, um, about only talking about Vancouver. There's just a lot to talk about this city because every suburb does benefit and and work and play and rely on a lot of what happens in downtown Vancouver, which is why we focus uh, a lot on it. But I want to do shift to Surrey and, and how... Uh, we do bring up Brad West once in a while. <laughs> I love Brad West. He's so common sense. What's but his budget? 2%? Like, 2%? Right, percent? right. 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 Did you yeah, see that? Town, but... Did you see the other the page turner um, that uh, I mean, Von Palmer wrote about um, the province going hardcore on what's happening with the Surrey Police Services and Brenda yeah. Locke and the battle there. And wow. then I guess CTV, I saw a tweet this morning um, from CTV saying that there's now a complaint to the police union about bullying by Surrey RCMP of Surrey Police Services oh. members within, like it's starting to get, mm, that's not it's, cool. no, it's, it's starting it to, Paul, you know, on the political realm, you know, we've talked about this. It's a win-win for her uh, at this point, you know, if, yeah. you know, she's really pushed herself into a corner, but at least she'll say, hey, I tried. I was here for you taxpayers. Uh, I did what right. I could do, uh, you know, now we are where we are. If that's what happens, it looks like that's where the province is just going to go, no. It's over. Right. She Let can still she can say no to that budget and the province will be like yes to that budget. And then it's like, OK, moving on next. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk so, about yeah. um, ramming through housing um, and the there are yes. like throw down Twitter wars going on between MLAs and mayors right now on on social media and and just. Yeah. Well, the process that said the legislature was not particularly open, so right. they kind of rammed it through. But, you know. The BC Liberals, AK, BC United, did that when they had a majority too with uh, issues. But 
you know, I think I, I've said this before, and, and I, I see the point of a lot of people making this. Is this a slippery slope of provincial control, specifically on stuff that needs to, that cities used to have control? And if you want to have a onerous public hearing process like we've had in Vancouver, where you know it takes months and months for things to get approved, and you spend million or millions to get something built, that's your choice. But you know, this process is is usurping the control of cities over a lot of development, where they'll. I don't, Michael Geller said there won't be, you know, pub, or I think it was Michael, I forget. Somebody said there won't be a public hearing process, but I, I don't know if I agree with that. I think there's still Shirley Bond's going off on it. Um, yeah, I think there's uh, still Katie will Merriweather's be, going off on it. You still have to have it. development yeah. permits and all that stuff. You still got to design right. the buildings. Yeah. You still, you still talk need to neighbors. Yeah. You still yeah. got to do all that stuff. Yeah. So I think it's a bit of a chicken little, like the sky is falling. But it does it does beg the question about if the province can get away with this and the NDP, then OK, well, hmm, what else can we take care of? Hmm, hmm, what else? You know, and start. OK, so I'm going to inject here from a, policing, lay a lay person's point of view, though, on both policing and on housing, because public safety and mm -hmm. housing and affordability uh, and just having literally no place for people to go and more people moving here every single day. Fight yeah. amongst yourselves another time. I've never seen in my lifetime, I have never seen a situation that we're witnessing right now. And and that's just layperson. So I'm I get it. It's politics. That's why I'm not in politics and never will be, because I wouldn't be able to look around a room and say, you guys are actually speaking in the best interests of the people right now, because you're not. It's all about power and and strategy and wedge issues. And how do I make you look bad? And because right now people need places to live like there's people are renting out beds in their house for thousands of dollars to, to co-sleep. What? Like, what the hell? My yeah. my grandparents came here as immigrants with my mother, who's a, an immigrant, and they ended up buying a home. Do you think immigrants can move here now and buy a home? No, no they can't. Can. I don't know who could buy a home. Like, exactly. at least in this I wouldn't I, be able I, to I buy a no home. Uh, no way I could. No way. No. Uh, so that's what's different. That is exactly, thank you, my point. If you all want to talk about, about why we're not having a better, more transparent process, because we're in a state of goddamn emergency is what we are. This is beyond we don't have yeah, another yeah. five years to rag the puck here we don't we just don't we don't have another election cycle we don't and everybody's like oh the ndp are going to really wear this i don't think they are i really don't <laughs> i no, don't I think so i don't think so i mean unless they do some more and they keep you know creeping away but at i don't it. think but they will at this point there's you know the opposition's trying to if federally yeah. though it's interesting to see what's happening because you, you see oh yeah nice segue uh, i like it you know the, mm -hmm. the, the the liberals are taking are trying to blame the conservatives for the housing crisis but in fact and i've talked about this before it was decisions made by the liberals 1993 92 <clears throat> where they dismantled the housing program that pierre trudeau had put in yeah which led to massive massive uh, uh surpluses under paul martin and people were loving that because it was very great times to be people love surpluses back in the day now people love deficits um right. and so he's sh socked away or he reduced our overall debt by a significant amount hundreds of millions over the time they were in power but they ended up dismantling a housing program that led to a reduction of at least probably now at this point seventy five thousand true social housing you know co-op housing you know uh, under the 30 percent kind of rural housing um, really wasn't built. And that's that's the number, basically, of people that need core need housing. Yeah. This You can't. Uh, and so go federal government needs to stop pointing fingers and they need to focus on because they're the only ones who can build housing at a, at a rate and with the money. True social housing. Uh, let the private sector yeah. deal with market rental yeah. and, and rental Agreed. and strata and homes. But the federal government, in partnership with private public partnerships, if they can, and certainly co-ops do that all the time, they need to deal with the social housing, the true social housing for the people that need it most in our country. And that is where yeah. we have fallen short as a nation. And it's embarrassing. You just look at all the tents. That's our fault. It's our wild. fault, all of us. Yeah. It is the, allowing it to have devolved to this degree, um, not get, getting ahead of some of the obvious impacts of it. And and now the whack-a-mole game of here's a speculation tax and here's what we're going to do with some Airbnbs politics. and some locations and here's da 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 all politics. Let's talk about the federal government a little bit and how mm -hmm. the, the, I mean, polls are polls, but holy moly, <laughs> it would appear that Justin Trudeau has, uh, has, has run his course. Yeah, I mean, he might try to, you know, well, the only example I can think of at this rate 
would be where Christy Clark managed to win in uh, 2000, whatever it was, 15. Four, um, yeah, 15. A surprise victory, you know, you, you know yeah. Uh, what was it kid, uh, they could, uh, the NDP could kick a dog or, or was <laughs> there some quote that he would still win the election? Um, and he'd lost, uh, the yeah. NDP lost, uh, with Adrian Dix, Adrian Dix could kick a dog and win the, that was the front page of the problem. This man could kick, could a, kick dog. a dog. Look at how's that a it's thumbs just, up guys. A I don't want a thumbs, a thumbs up. Oh my God. Well, it was, a, it was a thumbs down actually to the province, um, because they were so wrong. But the difference between that and what we're seeing federally is Christy Clark was the new leader. Gordon Campbell had left in a bit of a, uh, you know, because of the like, HST, which as it yeah. turns out was probably a good decision that we should have kept, but politics got in the way and we got rid of a good tax. We thought we had an affordability problem then though, right? Like yeah. when we look at, when we're, look at where we are now, and then we look back to then, and oh, I God, think that's those that's are the true. goggles that people need to look through, right? That's true. But I think oh Trudeau's God. days are numbered. So that's the difference. He's yeah. got to get out. He's got to leave. He's got to be able to open. And that's where he's he's doing the thinking now. And I give it days, if maybe really weeks before he he fails. He's got to really? call soon. It's going to take a year to go through that process. They need to get a leader. They need to have somebody who's. Who you know, do you and, think? And, uh, do you well, think? Uh, the former bank, the direct the head of the bank. Um, now his name has totally escaped me. Everybody. Um, he was the head of the Bank of Canada for a long time. Then he went to England. Oh my God. It'll come to me. Um, that's the, I, I brought I, up. I know past. who you're talking about and yes, I can't remember his name either. Um, uh, anyway, so, so that would be the front runner if he jumps in, uh, if we remember his name, <laughs> obviously uh, some of his key cabinet ministers, but the momentum that the conservatives have right now is pretty gigantic, gigantic. It's like, we're talking, you know, double, double, double the numbers of the liberals. It was nothing like that in the last election. And, you know, uh, Pierre Polyev is, Doing a really interesting strategy. Mark Carney. Mark Carney. Thank you. Jesus. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, I was like, it's Mr. Carney. It's Mr. Carney. It's Mr. Ar Carney. Carney. Yeah. It's Mark Mar Carney. I'm Mark Carney. Yeah. Mark yes. Carney, Christian Freeland. A, he would be the first if he throws his Francois name. Francois Philippe Champagne, uh, Anita Anon, Mark Garneau, uh, Dominic LeBlanc. Um, yeah. Those are the front runners, apparently. Six potential go. liberal leaders who could follow Justin Trudeau and a few long shots. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we don't have time to continue. We have just gone on and on, <laughs> my friend. So we'll we'll follow this up next Thursday. Unspun Maybe we'll have a leadership race by next week. You do predict things, my friend. Uh, <laughs> unspunpodcast.com is where you find us. If somebody's just sent this to you to be like, oh my God, can you believe the these two are talking about this? Unspunpodcast.com. Or you can follow along on your social media. We still call it Twitter. At least I do. Uh, I George. Know underscore Affleck George underscore Affleck on Twitter I'm at Jody Vance Jody with a Y on Twitter and Instagram and George is the best follow on TikTok Curve Communications this podcast brought to you by Curve <laughs> Communications <laughs> by your marketing from me that's right all right <laughs> have a nice peace day out. do I get weekend. a peace sign do I get a any balloons, balloons something no, now you get Yay! nothing 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 a thumbs up give us a thumbs up there oh there we go goodbye bye